All right, our next question is from Heather on having a high fasting blood glucose level on a low carb keto diet. Hi, Robin Nikki, I'm a huge fan and appreciate all the knowledge and insight you share on the podcast and everywhere else you show up. I've eaten low carb keto paleo ish for several years now and have done really well. I probably eat less than 100 grams of carbs per day, more like around 50, and eat an average of 100 grams of protein per day, grass-fed meat, bone broth protein, whey protein smoothies, nut seeds, pastured eggs, mackerel, sardines, and occasionally chicken. My fat intake is probably 90 to 100 grams a day. I'm 43 years old, 5 foot 4 at 118 pounds with less than 20% body fat. I go on long walks daily, weight train three times a week, and throw some HIIT training along with boxing in the mix. I used to be a spinning instructor and spent hours and hours on the bike each week, but haven't taught in four years and now only power walk for cardio outside of interval training at the gym. I have two kids, ages four and eight, so they keep me busy as well. I recently, as in two weeks ago, bought a blood glucose meter after giving in to my curiosity as to just what my fasting blood glucose is, along with postprandial, post-exercise, etc. I was shocked and so upset when I took my first reading one morning and it was 106. Since then, I've been rather obsessed and I'm pricking my finger all day long. Uh, But really, no matter if I'm fasted, just went on a long walk or weight training session, or even two hours after a meal, my blood glucose is always somewhere between 90 and 110. I never get a big swing upward after a meal, even after I indulged in gluten-free German chocolate cake the other night. It has only gone as low as 83 or 87 on two random occasions, which is making me wonder, what the heck? I've read different things about this online, but I really don't know who to trust other than you. Could it be cortisol? Could that be my norm? I was expecting my fasting blood glucose to be around 70 to 80 based on my diet and activity level. Please advise. I'm so confused. Thank you so much for all you do. So I think last week's podcast, we kind of had something similar to this uh, where the individual had uh, kind of higher blood glucose levels than what they they might think. And the problem, the way that we tackle this is triangulate what I call triangulating in on this. So we, we have a blood glucose level that's being tested at various points that looks higher than what we potentially would like. So then we look at the A1C and see what that looks like. And I would recommend just getting the fructosamine at the, at the same time. If the A1C is also elevated and the fructosamine is also elevated, then that means we have across the board elevated blood glucose levels. If fasting blood glucose or blood glucose in general as checked by a finger stick or even a CGM is high and A1C is high, but fructosamine is low, then we've got some other things going on like red blood cells living longer because of being on low carb and and stuff like that. Let's assume that it's the drizzling shits and it, 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 blood glucose is higher than what we would like. A couple of things that we can look at. One is making sure that you're on point with electrolytes. We know for a fact that inadequate sodium intake and electrolytes in general is an adrenal uh, uh, stress and people getting on point with the electrolytes ends up dropping heart rate, it drops cortisol levels, it tends to drop blood glucose levels. So I would make damn sure that you're on point with the electrolytes. And if that doesn't address things to the degree that you would like, then we start asking the question around, uh, you know, maybe you would do better at that 100, 150 grams of carbs a day, maybe a little bit more on heavier training days, a little bit less on more sedentary days. But that's kind of the way that I would tackle this. First, I would do a little bit of additional testing to figure out like, really, what do you have going on? Is it, is it concerning? Like, is your A1C and your fructosamine elevated in such a way that we would be concerned about that? And if it is, then the things to really tinker with are making damn sure that you're on point with your electrolytes, specifically sodium. If that doesn't address things, then I would definitely get in and, and tinker with it, just reintroducing more carbs and see how you do with that. Any other okay. thoughts, wife? No, I don't think so. Good question, Heather. Mm-hmm. Uh... 